May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Cornell. Here. Trustee Miller. Here. Trustee Mulvaney. Here. Trustee Pierce. Here. Trustee Thomas. Here. Trustee Vree. Here. Here. Tonight, we will not have the usual uh, report from the head of the finance committee because the uh, period of time from our last meeting till now is such that we haven't had further financial results or any treasurer's report for the finance committee to look at. And so there was no discussion of finances in the uh, committee of the whole tonight. In the committee of the whole, what we looked at was one, the survey that uh, AVM uh, had done for, with us, the uh, ETC Institute, I should say, uh, had done with respect to the village of Glencoe and the results of the survey. And uh, we were receiving a report on that. And that will be covered <coughs> in the uh, quarterly report that comes out in March so that all of our residents will receive information on that as well as eventually being put on the website so that it will be made fully available to all of our residents. The other thing that we covered in the Committee of the Whole tonight was a report from uh, Dave Mao with respect to the upcoming uh, two storm sewer projects that we will be undertaking this spring and their current uh, situation and also the HVAC uh, the changes that will be made to the Village Hall all of which are things that were contained in the bond issue that our residents passed uh, last year that will begin to be implemented this year. And so those were the things that we covered in the Committee of the Whole. So that brings us uh, to the uh, consent agenda. Is there anything, <coughs> that, any changes to the minutes or anything that anyone would like to discuss with respect to the consent agenda? If not, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Cornell? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Pierce? Yes. Trustee Thomas? Yes. Trustee Vree? Yes. All right, that brings us to public comment time where any member of the public that wishes to comment on something not on the agenda uh, can come forward and talk about it. Thank you, Mr. President. Can you hear me? We okay. can, Lori. First, before I start my public comment, I would like to congratulate the staff on the tremendously high ratings that everyone has received for consumer service. We live in a community with very high standards, and to receive such high marks on how you interact with some of us who can be very difficult um, really reflects well in our community. So I would like you to say that publicly before I go on with my topic. Here, here. <laughs> Um, so I've come before the board and to speak to each one of your trustees individually and collectively um, to bring up again a subject that I've talked privately with some of you. Uh, we, and it's a very small amount of money and a small issue, but over the long run I think it can be very beneficial to our community. Um, our new and wonderful re, uh, recycling contract with Lakeshore Recycling uh, allows for about double the size of the material sales rebate what our contract with Groot had. So um, a year ago, uh, the village and the budget, uh, David Nova, Nova Nova State Park, uh, would get about $5,000 back from the sale of our materials for recycling. And now the new contract is closer to $12,000. In the past, and I'm speaking to you today, this, this meeting because you're going to approve the budget for the year. Um, in the past, that money that was a rebate for recycling went right to the garbage budget counterintuitive because those of us who recycle aggressively really think that that money should go to things that would encourage recycling or other sustainability things. Um, to wrap this up very, very quickly, uh, the discussion has been that this $12,000 might be a portion of it allocated for investment in things that would save us money on an environmental level. And that could be uh, more efficient energy uses, either for the village or for those of us who are homeowners. Um, uh, better use of um, and lower costs for other services in the village that are environmentally related. I don't want to get too specific, but uh, the suggestion was that we go back and we have an environmental or sustainability commission in town 
Now staff and I have talked about this, and I had thought you might address this in your January meeting. Uh, it's not scheduled or on the agenda tonight, and I had come prepared to talk about it. Um, so I want to encourage you all, first of all, to say that a sustainability committee would help you all because it would give you additional input from citizens on these important issues. I believe that almost everything, every, every environmental measure we take, and I think Dave will find this day now as we upgrade our village hall, will save us money. And that this eleven or $12,000, which is a, a pass-through fee and not tax revenues, we pay our recycling on a fee base. The village gets between us and the recycler only to collect the money. That when there's a rebate, the village shouldn't stand between us and the people uh, when, the, when the money is returned through rebate. And so I think that up to the board to find the right disposition for this money. Very tempting to use it to plug, plug a budget hole, but this is not tax revenue and this is not a savings. This is actually <coughs> a rebate. So I'm going to leave the idea there. If anyone would like to speak to me about it, there's a very well developed plan for this. Um, please contact me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Lauren. We will definitely take that under advisement. Obviously, we haven't collected any rebate yet. It won't start until after the new contract starts. And um, we are, of course, in the process of considering whether or not to uh, put together an environmental uh, task force to do a number of things to take a bunch of projects. And if money comes in where it goes, we'll be taken up at the time that there's actually money to make a determination. So as of now, there's no use of any of it specified within the budget. This, the five thousand we received this year uh, reduced the amount of contribution made by the uh, general fund to the garbage fund, so it was applied to the cost of doing garbage. Right, and, and so, so we won't talk about garbage because my gold plated garbage really should be mixed with the funds for recycling. But thank you very much. You are welcome. All righty. The next item of business is the village manager's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a few things this evening under the manager's report that I wanted to make mention of, and uh, this is actually an, an item that um, Mrs. Morse might have found interesting, uh, but I'll circle back with her. Um, as the board will recall, several months ago, uh, Ms. Morse uh, inquired at a board meeting regarding various shoreline construction projects that were underway and whether the village had any jurisdiction to not only review these projects as they were being proposed, but also to review if there were any fees that the village could assess on these projects. Just as a reminder, these are currently permitted, overseen, and inspected by either or both of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources uh, and or the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the village is advised when these projects are underway, but we do not currently uh, provide any project oversight. Uh, staff's been working with the village attorney on uh, researching this topic. I expect to have a report back from uh, Mr. Elrod shortly, and uh, we will get back to the village board on this issue um, at a, a committee of the whole meeting, likely early this spring. Uh, but I did just want to advise everyone that we are working on this particular topic uh, as it, uh, it is interesting and something that uh, we want to make sure we vet appropriately. Um, Writer's Theater is nearing its construction completion um, to the point at which they have received a uh, conditional uh, occupancy permit from the village. We are dealing with a few last minute things, but they are about ready to go and uh, have a few uh, events scheduled next week in the new space. Uh, one of which uh, I have I've been told I can ad advise the community on, which is uh, next Friday, February 12th. At 10.30 a.m., they will be having an official ribbon cutting for the new building. Um, I know the board was invited. Uh, the public is, of course, invited to attend this event as well. First performances begin in late March, and they'll be uh, in the building really after the 12th. Uh, the box office will be open, as, a no as will a number of their uh, staff offices that are in the space. Had a chance to walk through it with uh, some of our staff about a week ago, and it really is a pretty amazing building inside. It's, um, it is something to behold. So it, uh, I think, is gonna be, there's a lot of excitement coming over the next few weeks. 
as they, uh, as they ready that building for the public's eye. Um, and lastly, uh, the village hall. Yes, yes there's one question on that. Do you, when you're talking to them, can you find out when they're doing the landscaping between the building and Friends Park? That would yep. be a big piece of everyone approving this. And there's a number of the comments that, that came through the survey, people have noted that. I, I, there are a couple of pieces to, um, to, to the building that haven't been completed yet, one of which is, are the green walls, the, uh, the ivy-covered walls that haven't had a chance to be planted yet, so that will help to soften them, as well as a lot of the uh, landscaping that has just not been planted yet because of the oh, season. So it's going to come in the spring. Yep, yep. And we, we've actually had a couple conversations with them about those comments and other comments that we've received. So the spring's eternal, and we hope that when it springs and it's eternal, it will keep them from giving us all the good comments on how white and blank that wall is. According to the groundhog, spring is supposed to be early this year, so that's a good sign. Hopefully. How could the groundhog be wrong? That's right. <laughs> uh, last but not least, just as a reminder, um, the village hall staff will be reporting to work on President's Day as usual on Monday, February 15th. However, the uh, building is going to be closed to the public that day. We're working to clean the village hall and begin the process of transitioning many of our thousands of paper files to electronic storage. Um, we talked a bit about this relative to technology in the Committee of the Whole, but this is part of a larger program to uh, begin to streamline some of, our, some of our internal services. As typical, public safety will be on duty uh, around the clock, and public works crews will be working as normal that day. It is a holiday for many, um, but we will be we will be here, just uh, not open to the to the public on President's Day. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Any questions on the bill pass report? Okay, Trustee Miller, do uh, you have a report on the good things that are coming out of the Plan Commission? I do. As a matter of fact, I um, I even have a show and tell. Uh, so we take one and. Yes, there are. You can have a piece. Um, so, if you ever wondered whether we do fun things on the plan commission, the answer is yes. Um, what you what you have there is um, what's technically called an urban form map, and um, what I personally call a footprint. Um, it shows the, the footprint of all of the uh, the buildings in the downtown area. And, and then on the left, there is a, um, a list of possible enhancements to the downtown. So what we did at our plan commission meeting uh, on uh, Wednesday, uh, I don't remember what the date was, but the last Wednesday in January, um, we, uh, we talked about um, what enhancements we might like to make to the downtown area and where we might like to make them. So for instance, we spoke a lot about wayfinding uh, that would be signage uh, so that you know, people perhaps going um, going down Green Bay Road or going along the Green Bay Trail or possibly even on Sheridan Road might have a better sense of where Blanco is in our downtown in particular. Uh, we talked about public art, festive lighting, you know, that would be where you maybe take a street and, and put lighting over it, um, open space enhancements, a lot of people are very interested in, uh, in lime and green, enhancing that, maybe making performance space or a place where people can gather, uh, have lunch, get together, that sort of thing. Um, so um, part of the reason for me mentioning this is that what, um, what will happen in the next few months is that the, um, the plan commission is going to um, have a draft of the, the plan, and that will be at our meeting next month, February 24th, and after that, the um, it, in effect, it goes to the public. We'll be having um, some, you know, I don't know whether there'll be public forums or open houses, what format it'll take, but we'll go to the public to say, this is our draft, um, take a look at it, and give us your feedback and respond. So it, it will not be presented by the plan commission to the village board until the public has had its input, including a chance to see these these cute little maps and, and, take, and take a look and see uh, what public reaction is to it. Um, so the um, the only other thing that I, I wanted to uh, to mention um, 
is that there is at the library uh, on February 21st um, something being presented by the Historical Society on Frank Lloyd Wright and Jens Jensen in Glencoe about 100 years ago or a little more. They were collaborating. And um, that's something that the Plan Commission has studied along with the Historical Society. They've been guiding us. And, and I commend uh, those programs to people and they relate to what we're doing because what we're doing is a continuation of um, the history that this village has of, of taking planning very seriously. And a lot of what we enjoy today in the downtown um, is a result of all of that planning. And anything we don't enjoy in the downtown is somebody else's fault. So, um, that's it. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Trustee Thomas, uh, anything to report on our Golf Advisory Committee or their budget? I do, although I think the main uh, show will be Stella presenting the, uh, the uh, proposed budget, but uh, we did meet this past Monday, uh, just so the board knows uh, what lies behind Stella's presentation, for example, besides all the work that Stella does in pulling together the data. <coughs> a month ago, we met to go over the, uh, the various capital uh, expenditures expected for next year and uh, uh, approve those. Uh, this last Monday, we went over the proposed rates for various categories of golfers. Uh, this is actually a fairly careful process. Uh, uh, Stella gets information uh, about all of the competitors, and we have managed at least to date, to have sort of hit the sweet spot in terms of various ways of, of breaking down the types of golfers and the times for various rates and so forth. Uh, we've done so well at that, uh, unfortunately, that our competition is beginning to adopt the same uh, rate structures and uh, times that we have. But uh, what we have going for us in particular is that we uh, have a better golf club. So, uh, it's, uh, uh, we're still expecting to do well, as, as you will hear from uh, uh, Stella's budget presentation. The only other thing is um, the club uh, will be hosting the Illinois State Senior Amateur Qualifier for the Chicago District Golf Association. This is, you know, again, another one of these, these uh, sort of feathers in the cap, if you will, of the course where we're being asked increasingly to, to uh, host these kind of events. Uh, it uh, is, exposes uh, golfers who might not otherwise be aware of the golf course or, or indoor Glencoe to, uh, to visit. And uh, they've been very successful in the past, and this is yet another one of these kinds of events. And that's it. Thank you. In terms of my report, there are a couple of things I did want to mention at the outset. This past Saturday, we had the uh, Northwest Municipal Conference legislative uh, lunch with our various senators and representatives, uh, both state and federal. And it was uh, a very interesting time. They, they uh, heard from the conference what our legislative agenda is for the coming year. And uh, they had an opportunity and talked at some length about what's going on in the legislature. With respect to the budget impasse, probably one of the more interesting aspects of the discussion is that while the legislators, the state legislators, both senators and uh, representatives, all discussed the desire to work together and how they think they can work and solve uh, the issue of the budget. None of them had any thoughts about when or how they would actually come together and reach any conclusion with respect to the budget crisis. And a number of them spent a fair amount of time discussing the fact that they thought that two things would be involved in whatever the resolution was. One is, uh, for sure, one way or the other, higher taxes because they're, they're of the mind that the only way they can solve and close the budget gap is a substantial increase in uh, state taxes <coughs> or taking all, away all of the funds that normally <coughs> flow to local government. Let local government increase taxes in order to pay for what they do. 
So it was not exactly a, a very happy time in the thought of uh, the state necessarily coming to grips with where they are or an expectation that it, the budget crisis is going to be solved very soon. Uh, all the indications are that it certainly won't be dealt with in any meaningful way until after the primary uh, elections and then no we quite know where it's going to go. Another indication that occurred last week uh, that tells us a little bit about the thinking in Springfield about where we are uh, is a bill that was introduced by the governor's floor leaders in the House and a comparable bill that is being considered for introduction in the Senate. As you will recall, we have talked about uh, the fact that earlier last year, about mid-year, the state stopped passing through a number of taxes that the state collects on behalf of local governments, such as the 911 tax and use tax, et cetera. And the result of that uh, was that the various municipal and governmental conferences and that came together and worked with the legislature, and the legislature ended up uh, virtually unanimously passing legislation to authorize the controller to pay those taxes that are being collected on behalf of state governments to the state government. And we came away with the belief that at least for the rest of this fiscal year, which is what they authorized, that that meant that we were likely to be able to count on receiving our sales taxes and things and could budget accordingly. It uh, now turns out that there is a new move afoot to alter that. The uh, governor's floor leader in the House introduced HB House Bill 4521, uh, which would permit the governor for the next two fiscal years, this one and the coming fiscal year through 2017, to sweep all tax revenues being held for distribution to local governments, uh, uh, you know, meaningful state taxes that are collected on our behalf, and to use those to handle the state's budget crisis uh, and pay for things that are either ordered by courts or by contract uh, that the state wishes to apply the funds to. So once again, we're in a position where having just had the legislature vote to protect those funds, uh, they're again being asked to consider making it so those and whole bunches of other funds that the state receives uh, be made available to the governor to spend as he thinks is appropriate uh, in order to handle the budget crisis. Uh, at the same time that was introduced, uh, the state controller was again emphasizing that currently the state has about 200 to 250 million dollars in the bank and uh, in excess of uh, 6.5 billion dollars in currently payable bills. So 250 million, 6.7 billion, they're not exactly close together in being in a place where the state is able to handle its current crisis. So more to come, but that means that uh, while we had put into the budget, as will be discussed as we do it this, e uh, this evening, a lot of thought and uh, various pieces designed in case we did have problems with where the revenues are going to come from, etc. that we have contingency plans and things. We may be facing even stronger contingency issues than we had anticipated. Alrighty, that said, uh, let me remind everybody that we will have no village board meeting this February 18th, which would be the normal date for us to consider budget because we've moved that meeting up to today. So our next village board meeting will be on March 17th, 2016. Unless there are questions, that concludes my report and we can move on to the next item, which is uh, Stella's presentation to us of the golf course um, the golf club's budget for fiscal year 2017, which is an informational discussion. I don't have a question. Um, as Dale 
reviewed a little bit, the golf club is on a different schedule than the village board budget. We are an enterprise fund. We receive no tax dollars and our monies are not intertwined at all with the general fund. So we're completely separate and that's why we're on a different schedule. It's actually a lot more helpful to me to be longer in the, the season because I can see how my shoulder season ends up and it helps me budget accordingly. Uh, we're gonna go through, it wasn't yellow when I made it. Um, we're gonna go through this year a little bit and then, and then touch on our budget. Um, this year we ended up with almost 32,000 rounds. Uh, November and December brought an additional 1,300 rounds over budget. So without those two decent months, it would have been a pretty mediocre year. Uh, that also equated to $57,000 that went right to our bottom line. Uh, expenses in the shoulder season for payroll are minimal. The majority of the work is handled by my full-time staff head pro, assistant pro, and myself working the shop to keep our expenses down. And that's our best time to drive revenues because there's not much going on. Um, so overall, round count wise, we're, we're pretty much in line with where we've been. The highest numbers that you see on there are the years that we have very little rain throughout years. And also we had uh, one of our best years when the Wilmette was closed. Our projections for this year are pretty healthy. Uh, we do include our improvement plan expenses as part of our, our total budget. So we are expecting to spend $270,000 this year in our improvement plan, which is on average, we usually spend around 275. We did have another $400,000 budgeted this year, which we have budgeted again for next year in the event that we do get an approval for the clubhouse that would be for the architectural fees. So our total improvement fund increase after you take out the improvement plan is $80,000. Going into our budget for next year, you did receive uh, the rates that were approved. Uh, we get into a pretty detailed report with the Golf Advisory Board. We're expecting to be pretty much in line with this year's numbers. Uh, we are gonna have a, an increase, our highest increase next year in general expenses is going to be our cart lease. We had to get a new cart fleet this year and we'll be spending an extra $15,000 annually to cover that expense. Uh, we do have $679,000 in our improvement fund and again $400,000 of that is for the architectural fee. So the general expenses are around $279,000 for our normal investment. Oh boy, that's horrible. Uh, you received the, uh, the detail of the, uh, the plan, but some highlights on there was the, of course, the, the building alterations. Oh, nice. Building alterations. Um, a lot of the work we do in-house, uh, so we do have a labor line item that does help us save money so we don't have to go out to, to bid for many of the projects, expanding our greens and bunkers, drainage work. Um, removing the, the T path on number nine, all of that will be done in house. Uh, just a review of where our money goes and, and annually how we reinvest. At this point, with our projection, we will have spent over uh, over two million dollars on the golf course, and that does make us different from everyone else. That we, we put all our money back into the course, and that's that's how we promote ourselves as being in better condition than the most. Uh, so at the end of this year, we are expecting our reserve fund to be uh, 1.3 with our budget next year. If we do spend the 679, at this point next year, our reserve fund will be at $630,000. Uh, so we are, we are planning on a, a pretty healthy budget again for this coming year, but as they all did state, the competition is, is catching on to a lot of our, our rates and specials that we're doing, so we're going to come out with some different creative strategies in the spring to uh, try to get some of uh, the rounds back. Are there any questions, any questions? on the budget? We're, we're glad that you got us into the black by the time you got finished. Me too. I'm not sure we're getting into the yellow. <laughs> <laughs>
So it, the cost estimate is about 8% of the total. So we have $400,000 in our 10-year plan designated in two years. So if we do spend it this year, we would also budget another 400 next year. It's based on what would be standard architectural fees for building of that cost, that magnitude. Yep. The one other thing I think that people should appreciate it. How many of you have actually been around the course? But Stella mentioned that, that so much of the improvements in the course have been done in house. And that really, again, separates, as I said, from most of the other courses that we have. Uh, you see the, the stone work and so forth, it's done, uh, many of the tea boxes and stuff like that. That is all done in house, which means we save a lot of money by not having outside contractors. And it's fabulous, but uh, it's, uh, it's really quite a testament to uh, the Stella and Dave Martin to, uh, to uh, do that. Work. And the value to the course, while we show him done, as we get through with this, about $2 million worth of improvements that have made the course what it is and much more uh, acceptable and, and a much more interesting play to golfers. If you actually took that at what it would cost retail, most courses would have to invest to put those improvements in. It's probably much closer to $3 million worth of improvements. Thank you. Thank you, so The next order of business is the consideration of an ordinance to establish a fiscal year 2017's uh, fees and fine schedule and uh, grant the liquor licenses for uh, Starbucks beginning now and for Starbucks and Chivo for next year. Uh, and I, I would think we can hear about these, but vote on, it would make sense to vote on this because it's really a part of the approval of the fiscal year 2017 budget. So when I get to asking for a motion on it, I will probably ask for it at the same time. Uh, does staff want to say anything or have any comments that they would like to make as to the fiscal uh, 2017 fee schedule? We have a, a brief presentation that we can go through. It, it in many cases, is uh, mimicked uh, the presentation that was made two weeks ago. Um, we're happy to, to do that if the board so desires. Otherwise, we certainly can answer any questions. Um, but we'll, we can proceed at the, at the board's direction. There are two, two things that were done. Um, some of the fees were updated based upon the conversations we had uh, in deliberations on the budget, and that's where you see the yellow with the cross out and the change. The ones that are just yellow were a comprehensive overview of the entire village code was done, and we realized that there were a few fees that had not been included in this that we wanted to make sure we did. And so we, it's a cleanup. Yeah, looking at some of those, I recognize that this is That's correct. The shorthand version of that is that years ago we had the fees spread through the code. We attempted to put them all in one spot so it would be easy to fix it up. Somebody missed a few, so uh, Phil was busily cleaning that up. The ones in yellow are the ones that got moved out of other places and put in where they should have been in the comprehensive fee schedule. Are there other questions with respect to the fee schedule or can we move on to the fiscal year budget? Okay, let us take up the uh, fiscal year 2017 budget. Uh, do you have some things to staff want to 
Dave has, has is prepared to make a brief presentation, um, but again, that's that's at would, the board's would discretion. Be the same presentation. Very similar it's, information that was presented right. last okay. last two weeks ago, I okay. should say. I, I, I don't need to hear it again. I don't need to hear it again. Right. For, fortunately, we don't need to bore everybody to death doing the same stuff. Could I have a motion to approve the? Uh, fiscal year 2017 fee and fine schedule and to approve the fiscal year 2017 budget. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Cornell. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Mulvaney. Excuse me. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Vree. Yes. Okay. May I have a motion pursuant to Open Meetings Act Section 2C2 to go into closed session to consider collective negotiating matters between the village and its employees or their representatives. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Cornell. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Pierce. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Free. Yes. 